Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing all eight of the vitamin C products from The Ordinary. Yes, my favorite topic, vitamin C. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. All right, quick primer on vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic acid. This is an antioxidant and it helps your skin out by donating negative charge to molecules like DNA as well as collagen, ultimately protecting them from destruction due to oxygen free radicals that are generated upon exposure to a variety of environmental stressors. There is evidence that applying ascorbic acid to your skin can also help to remove sun damage and boost up collagen production, ultimately potentially smoothing out wrinkles Ascorbic acid applied to the skin can help in improving hyperpigmentation, but it's not as easy as just putting ascorbic acid into a product that you then slap on your skin to get those results. Ascorbic acid is notoriously difficult to formulate in skincare products. It's very unstable. It degrades readily upon exposure to light, heat, as well as in the presence of things like iron and copper. Ascorbic acid is water soluble, and so that makes it challenging to actually get into your skin. Ascorbic acid requires an acidic pH to remain stable and to actually get into your skin. Concentration matters. You want a concentration between 10 and 20%. Higher is not necessarily better. In fact, higher doesn't get you any better results and can be more irritating. Then there are a few other ingredients that can really help stabilize the vitamin C as well as improve its penetration in the skin. Ferulic acid and vitamin E. Now, because ascorbic acid is so fickle in terms of its stability and skin penetration, you have a variety of other, what I call ascorbic acid alternatives. And we're gonna get into those because The Ordinary offers several products with these types of ingredients. Number one, vitamin C suspension 23% plus HA spheres 2%. This goes for $5.80. It is ascorbic acid. 23% is a pretty high percentage. Remember, I said max you want 20%. Above that is not any better and is just more irritating. And this formulation lacks other ingredients that are known to help improve the penetration and stability. There's no ferulic acid and there's no vitamin E. There's really nothing else. It's basically ascorbic acid and some humectants, sodium hyaluronate. At the end of the day, at best, this is a moisturizer and a moisturizer that is more likely to cause irritation because it is using a higher, such a high percentage of ascorbic acid. I can't be confident whatsoever that this is actually getting into your skin and doing what it's supposed to do. So I don't recommend this product. Number two, the vitamin C suspension 30% in silicone. This goes for $6.80. The vitamin C suspension 30% is even higher than the first product, so even more likely to cause irritation. The difference here is that rather than having sodium hyaluronate, this product is formulated in silicones. Silicones have a nice slip to them, they feel better, they create a more cosmetically elegant formulation. So that is the major difference here, that and a higher percentage of ascorbic acid, which is more likely to cause irritation for you. This product lacks the ferulic acid or any other antioxidant that might help stabilize ascorbic acid. It also, again, lacks vitamin E, and we're not told anything about the pH of this product. Probably just doesn't get in, uh, and I have no confidence in this whatsoever. The only thing I can say is that it's likely to cause irritation. I say skip it as well. All right, product number three, you guys have heard a full video from me on it before. I'll put it as an eye in the sky. 100% L-ascorbic acid powder, it's $5.80. It's just an ascorbic acid powder, but I caution you strongly against this product. Why? Well, the way this product works is they want you to take it and reconstitute it yourself. And this is particularly problematic because you as a consumer have no control over things like pH, you have no control over how the vehicle that you have reconstituted the ascorbic acid in is going to impact stability. Another problem with ascorbic acid in a powder for the consumer is that it can crystallize. And what this ends up causing is that when you go to apply it onto the skin, you can get hot spot areas where you have crystals of ascorbic acid creating a lot of irritation for you. I am not a fan of these ascorbic acid powders. I think they do the consumer a disservice. Cosmetic manufacturers really have a lot of hurdles when it comes to creating a vitamin C product that is not only stable, but actually will get into the skin and do what it's supposed to do. So to just give the consumer the ingredient and make them stumble through all of these hurdles, I think is not helpful. And again, very likely to cause irritation. 
Number four is ascorbic acid, 8% plus alpha arbutin, 2%. This is a $10 serum. Now, 8% ascorbic acid is pretty low, and this product lacks the ferulic acid and the vitamin E. We're not told anything about the pH, so I'm not confident that it is stable, and I'm not confident that it's actually gonna get into your skin and do anything. I think it's mostly just going to oxidize in the bottle before it really has a chance to even attempt to get into your skin. Now, this product has another good ingredient, however, alpha arbutin 2%, which is a skin lightening ingredient. It works by inhibiting tyrosinase, the enzyme that leads to pigment production, so it can lighten dark spots. Now, for somebody looking to lighten dark spots, hyperpigmentation, just fade some sun damage, this is a viable option. However, for those of you who are selecting a vitamin C serum because you want some of these other benefits, namely new, uh, boosting up collagen production and removing uh, sun damage, then I think this is not your best option. So those four products are ascorbic acid products. Now the next four products do not have ascorbic acid. They have the ascorbic acid alternatives that I mentioned at the beginning. Product number five is ascorbyl glucoside solution, 12%. This is $12.90. What is ascorbyl glucoside? It is a sugar modified ascorbic acid that is less susceptible to photodegradation than ascorbic acid. However, it has to be converted to ascorbic acid in the skin. And the studies on this ingredient are not very encouraging. So I don't have any confidence in this that it actually gets into the skin and converts to ascorbic acid to then have the downstream effects of boosting up collagen production, as well as removing sun damage and improving hyperpigmentation. As an antioxidant, it's only 50% as potent as ascorbic acid. So you're really selling yourself short here on an ingredient that's really just not that evidence-based. Number six is the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate 10%. This is $9.60. Magnesium ascorbyl phosphate is a salt of ascorbic acid. Studies with this ingredient are not very convincing that it actually gets into the skin. It is a prodrug of ascorbic acid, meaning your skin has to actually convert it to ascorbic acid in order to have the downstream benefits of boosting up collagen production. So I am not convinced that this is an ingredient that is worth it. I think it is just an alternative to ascorbic acid that is easier for cosmetic manufacturers to use, but for the consumer, it doesn't offer evidence-based outcomes. Product number seven, a bit of a mouthful, is the ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate solution 20% plus vitamin F. What is ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate? Well, like magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, it requires conversion in the skin to ascorbic acid in order to have the downstream benefits. Studies on cells in a dish, meaning not actual people, do suggest that there is the potential for at least 84% conversion of this ingredient to ascorbic acid, but we lack well-powered studies on this ingredient showing that it actually gets into the skin and is com converted in real-world use and then has the downstream effects of boosting up collagen production, improving wrinkles and fine lines, and improving hyperpigmentation and removing sun damage. I don't recommend this product. Ethylated ascorbic acid 15% solution. This is an $18 serum. This ingredient is a lot more stable than ascorbic acid. However, there is very limited to no data showing that it is beneficial in terms of boosting up collagen production. At any rate, it may be a beneficial antioxidant. It's less effective than ascorbic acid. So while it is stable, I think for $18, there are much better options in terms of an antioxidant. The Ordinary has several antioxidant serums, which I have reviewed before, that are wonderful, like their resveratrol serum. Highly recommend that. So in summary, I don't recommend any of the Ordinary's vitamin C products. Their ascorbic acid products are of questionable formulations. The, they don't contain the ingredients necessary to stabilize the ascorbic acid or enhance penetration. It's uncertain what the pH is, and, and many of them are using a higher percentage than necessary, which is more likely to cause irritation for the consumer. And as far as their ascorbic acid alternatives, as I call them, to me, ascorbic acid alternatives, as it stands, are merely a cash grab for cosmetic companies because it is so challenging to actually formulate 
ascorbic acid correctly in such a way that it gets into the skin. And consumers just want to use a vitamin C serum. They've heard it's good, they just want one. So rather than formulating an ascorbic acid serum, they just use these stabilized alternatives that we don't have the data on actually. Uh, so they can sell you a vitamin C serum. The only vitamin C serum on the market that really has a lot of data behind it is the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic. It is a patented formulation. Because the CE Ferulic is patented, you know, a lot of brands will try and dupe it. And, you know, to get around the patent, they may end up using a different pH, but that's gonna compromise the stability of the ascorbic acid and also gonna compromise its penetration into the skin. They also um, may tweak some of the percentages around, uh, but you're not, getting the, you're not getting the formulation that's been shown to actually work. So I, I do recommend that one if you absolutely are set in stone that you wanna use a vitamin C serum. In my opinion, much of the benefit that consumers observe when using a vitamin C serum comes from the fact that first of all, the formulations contain moisturizing ingredients and moisturizing the skin improves overall skin luminosity and can actually just improve overall the look of hyperpigmentation, make it look lighter simply by light scattering. Secondly, most vitamin C serums, at least, you know, like the CE Ferulic reputable ones, they have ferulic acid in them, which is a skin brightening ingredient by itself a potent inhibitor of tyrosinase, using that ingredient alone is going to get you the benefits that a lot of people observe with using a vitamin C serum, but it may have nothing to do with the vitamin C. So I say skip these. <laughs> um, yeah, I know people watch these videos and they think, why is she hating on the ordinary? I actually like several of the ordinary products. And if you wanna know which ones I like, check out my video on my top 10 favorites from the ordinary and check out my video on antioxidant serums from The Ordinary. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.